I hereby call to order this meeting of the Sunday Select Board. It is 6.31 p.m. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes from our last meeting on May 21st, 2024. I would entertain motion. I motion we approve the minutes from May 21st. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes from May 21st. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, yeah. All right. We have one uh, order of business today, and that is to appoint a highway seasonal laborer. Is George here today or is... No, uh, he sent me the information. He's recommending um, Holden Woodward. Um, he's a UMass student, um, former Deerfield Academy. George said I think he interviewed two or three folks. Um, and this person was the most qualified. So, the last mess. So, what are the dates for the seasonal labor? Um, he would like the person to start um, as, as soon as possible after okay. appointment. Um, and I would imagine that the person is going to be going through August or okay. when, when school starts, maybe a few weeks before. Yeah. No. Well, and hiring decisions for the for his department, I trust George and for those matters. So I assume he picked the most qualified candidate. All right. Um, I'm assuming you just need a, a simple. Yeah. All right. Hold right. Hold in what? Woodward. 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 Okay. All right. At the time, I would entertain a motion to appoint Holden Woodward as the seasonal laborer. I'm not sure we can find Holden Woodward as seasonal laborer for the highway department. Second. Sure. All right. We have motion made and seconded to appoint the highway seasonal laborer. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that's all completely we had a lunch. Good, good. All right, so next up is all business. Um, and as I'm sure both of you are here for, um, let's talk about the big ball session. Jeff, do you want to get us up to date of where we are and then we can go from there? Yeah, so um we have designs for two pickleball courts at Riverside Park. Um I've been doing research on the noise levels and the decibel levels and distance from houses and potential mitigation. Um, and I, you know, I, there are some possible solutions. Um, moving the court is one of them. Um, there are sound barriers that can be placed, um, which are basically fences with some sort of padding to absorb the sound. There's also different equipment that can be used, um, paddles. Sorry, and Jeff, you have a, a butter that's in oh, the waiting room. Oh, thank butter, you. Um, paddles and balls that, that um, are quieter than typical pickleball paddles and balls. We could also regulate the hours that the courts are in use. Um, that being said, uh, I think that you know, the other thing that I found out is typically when design firms are asked about pickleball courts and not given a location, they like to place them at least 500 feet from residential properties. Um, there was also mention about the newly painted courts at Frontier and um, anecdotes that that avid pickleball players are bringing in their own lights and extending hours past um, light, light time. So I think that there it, it's I think that it's attractive to people and it's also uh, a nuisance to people nearby who aren't using it. So a couple of clarifying questions. One, how far to so 500 feet is the if they had their way that would be it would be about 200 feet. 200 feet, okay. Um, so to address the first option there, which is moving it, do we have other options in town that would work for this? Um, we could explore other options. The way the CPA article was written, um, we would have to go back to the CPA uh, and town meeting to change the location. Okay, that's fine. Do we have an estimate on sound barrier? Um, I my understanding is that there are sound barriers. They don't always work as great as they should. Yeah. Um, so there are tens of thousands of dollars, over ten thousand for a sound barrier. Um, I don't have an exact figure. That's that right. Is. So the sound barrier, again, just to be very clear on this, goes between the pickleball court 
in the residential area versus just around the pickleball court. Is that correct? It, it could be where wherever we decide it's needed. Um, one of the things that I saw is that because of the way sound waves travel, it's better to put it closer to the pickleball court so it doesn't have to be as high. The further away it is, it has to be higher so there's more visual impact. Um, but I think that that would be the main purpose. I don't think we there, there's nothing at least to the west that that would cause issues. Um, I don't believe there there are no properties directly north within 500 feet, and this is this building is south. So, and if we did decide we wanted to add sound proofing measures, um, is that something we have to go back to the CPA for additional funding for? Or is that something that we would short up otherwise? Um, we would probably need to go back. We would probably want to talk to the architect about whether or not the fences that he designed could handle the soundproofing and what, what they recommended. Um, I don't know that we would have to go back to CPA for more money at this point, but potentially when we go out to bid for construction, depending on what those bids come back. Okay. Then we could do what we could do a um estimate of probable cost before we go out to bid. So we should have some idea of whether or not it makes sense to even go out to bid without okay. additional funds. And in terms of how binding the the uh, town meeting a year and a half or a year and a little bit ago that vote was, the select board had a certain amount of discretion in terms of whether we carry that out or are we bound by that because the town decided not. Um, town meeting appropriates money and the select board actually spends it. So okay. yes, it is up to you to spend up to the amount appropriated at town meeting. So what do we know about the quieter equipment? Is that an expense? How do you enforce that? Um, I don't know if it's an additional expense. Uh, what I, again, a lot of this is anecdotal is that people don't like the quieter balls, but the quieter paddles are more expensive than the standard paddles. Um, yeah, how would we go about enforcing? I mean, so it's easy to put together a bylaw that says you can play okay. during these hours, here's approved equipment. But like you said, who's going to be out there saying, oh, that sounds like it's a little too loud. And then okay, yeah. we well, I'm not so worried about enforcing the hours because if there's you know, if there's people playing after hours, there's a means to address that. I don't think we could expect a police department or anyone to determine whether someone's using correct equipment, regardless of whether that's in a bylaw or not. Yeah. Are there any... I mean, I'd be curious, are there any examples of where they've done solitary, you know, done something to solitary issues that could be visited? Or... Um, I don't know about in public places. Yeah. I, I know that often in private residential developments, yeah. they they do it, and those courts are often closer to residences, um, but they all sign HOAs <laughs> that says we accept it. Um, I could look into it. I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. It's good to visit one, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I am going to be prepared in case the kitchen works. <laughs> um, the, what we'll have the board want to proceed? Do we want to act up a comment? Do we want to, yeah, okay, yeah, so they're here. The board, <laughs> think, the, the board has, has talked amongst themselves enough. Um, at this time, we will open the board of public comment. Um, I ask that everyone do two things one, raise your hand and be called on. And two, once called on, state your name for the record, uh, because we are having to do public meetings, whatnot, and 
you need to do that. So uh, at this time, are there any questions, comments, anything like that? Yes, sir, in the back. Good evening. So my name is John Carney. Um, I'm from Deerfield, so I'm kind of a carpet bagger here right now. <laughs> but um, I'm the founder, a founder of Deerfield Pickleball, along with Kevin Brennan here. And uh, we have done some things to accommodate our neighbors. Um, for example, we limit our, our morning hours. We don't start till 9 a.m. We don't own the course. Of course, that's uh, Frontier High School. So uh, we're just a an organization, uh, kind of a large organization, that uses the courts. And we uh, recommend to all of our, our uh, members that there's no play before before 9 a.m. And that's to accommodate the neighbors again. Now, we have people who would like to play at 7 a.m., but it's not one of our bylaws or rules. Uh, we also have a, our, our uh, courts are in, uh, encompassed by a large fence. And we have a matting that we didn't put in, but the school put in. It runs all the way along the sides of the courts. It helps us in the sense that it, it's a wind barrier, but it also helps the neighbors because it's a sound barrier. So I think that um, between limiting the hours and having this matting, uh, it's like a, you can see through it, but it does provide some sound barrier. Um, I think that basically keeps the neighbors more or less happy with the situation. Uh, you're never going to get 100% uh, agreement on any one thing, but I think the real neighbors realize that we have football, soccer, we have a lot of sports going on in the same area, and pickleball is just one more sport. Um, and to address the commentary about Lighting at night, we're not doing that. Um, it had been tried, I think, at one point. It was, it was, it was a one, one, one and done. Um, so we're not doing that. Um, we don't play loud music. Um, we're very uh, interested in being good neighbors. So I think uh, up to this point, I think we've accomplished that. And we only started in August of 2022. And I remember Kevin and I were taping off the courts after we got permission to do so. And we did, I think we started off with maybe two courts. And I said to Kevin, do you think we're ever going to get maybe 20 people to come on and play? We have only 600 plus now members, not all the players every day. But on this past Sunday, we had 35, 40. So it's a growing sport. I think every town will eventually have their own courts, and as you know, Frontier is not available. Um, during school days, you can't play. During tennis season, we can't play. Um, so it's just some weekends. Um, so anyhow, you know, we are restricted. It would be nice to have a couple of uh, additional options if uh, you, you want to head with your uh, with the process. But um, it would always be good to have that extra couple of courts to use. I mean, I play every single day. I don't miss a day. So um, if, I could, if I couldn't play at Frontier, I would go somewhere else. I go to Greenfield, finally, if they ever do their thing up there, it'd be nice to come here as well. So thank you. And can I ask a question? I'm Judy Gatlin. Um, how do you enforce the before 9 a.m. rule? As I say, we don't own the courts. Is the Frontier High School, uh, they, they own the course. We use the course. We're the main users of the course. We have posted uh, on, the, on the entry gate um, the rules that we recommend. We cannot, we can't run down there if someone's there at 8.30, for example. But our rules, one of them, for, for example, we, we don't allow glass inside the, and this is all um, to keep the school satisfied for safety, but there's no glass allowed. Plastic is fine, no glass, um, no food. We try to keep our food. I have a table outside, mark food. If somebody wants to bring food to share, they can do that, but put it outside and people are asked to consume outside. And on the, on the rules of entry, 
um, we stay 9 a.m. start time. So those are recommendations or rules, but there's no enforcement. The only thing I have a problem with solving for alcohol in the middle school is not the best of it. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm Kevin Brennan. I'm from Jiggle. So we did a couple of things. Um, um, it's, it's the only adult program there is in the uh, actually four towns, Mega Frontier, um, and uh, let's say about the sound. Um, uh, um, I get I love it. I apologize for that. But you know, you know, we uh, we can't enforce it. The uh, the people come and going, but it's our, it's our policy. We people, you know, should be doing that. I, I do want to do it. to me now. I I thought. Uh, when I was talking to uh, Mr. Badesco uh, about some issues, I talked about how we, we met with the neighbors and we were going to move our time to a certain time to accommodate them. And uh, he said to me that their complaints were all sports. They didn't sing about pickleball, they sing about Friday night football, Friday night soccer, girls uh, softball, girls field hockey. So we're just, we were just part of the equation. We weren't singled out. Yes. Good evening. My name is Kathy Kane, and I am an ambassador for USAPA, which is the governing body of Kent Park. Uh, I want to address your question first. If there's a rule, we the pickleballs can enforce it. That's how it gets enforced. People who come to play, if we have rules that are established and they are breaking them, we the players address it. That's how it gets enforced. Well, how do you do that? You're not there all the time. Well, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I can just respond to that. Yeah, um, we, we, we did. Uh, as as uh, founders, uh, we we were Kevin and I were notified that some people had come down from another town uh, earlier than our established policy. Um, once and, and it was they were unaware apparently of our policy. Once we found out. <clears throat> That there was a rule violation. We did address uh, with those people and told them that's not going to happen again. And they were members of our organization. But what about people who aren't members? Like if I want to go play, I don't want to join a pickleball association. I just want to go play. It doesn't matter. But, but you, you can't enforce me. You still have to enforce the laws when the laws. The are laws, enforced. right? But you can, couldn't enforce me if I'm not a member of your organization, correct? Well, yeah, you, you'd be blackballed pretty fast. But, but blackballed by so that that's I think one of the big issues is blackballed by who? If I'm not a member of your organization, there will be people in town here who want to come play who will not be members of your organization. We're not going to tell them they can't play there. Well, if, there, if the time has been established, then I, I would say correct. Well, then reference to the police. So correct. That correct. Would be, yeah, but that would be that would be a law that you people would set up that correct the police would enforce. So, right. right. Our police would enforce, but it wouldn't be the pickleball association or anyone like that enforcing it. And no. I guess I I personally have a concern is how often would you would this pickleball association be monopolizing those courts versus those courts being open maybe for jessica to go play or other people to play so in my group i have several leaders amongst my group and we split out the week by you're the leader on tuesday you're the leader on thursday yeah 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 so when and all of the, everybody on the court comes on my court. And by the way, I'm from Antioch, Connecticut. And anybody who comes on to our court, you know, knows the rules to play amongst what our rules are. And if they're not being enforced, then, then yes, they're, they're, they're going to be chastised by the group. Or if you can actually make it a law, then, you know, your police are going to be notified to enforce it. But just to layer on the official thing, if the if all the arguments for location that exists currently and whatnot are coming from people who are outside of Sunderland, who are part of the organization, who are saying that well, I live in Deerfield, I live in Enfield, I live here, I live here, here, and I want to come to your town to use your new facility, and that being stacked up against neighbors' concerns about noise and whatnot, I'm telling you right now, the people outside of town are not going to have any consideration 
when it comes down to decision making than people who are in town. And so, not gonna lie, it doesn't help your case a whole lot to come here without people from town who are saying, "Hey, I'm a suburb of Bethlehem. I'll come absolutely, and I'll get you to stuff again." Just, just saying, your argument that like I want to come from Enfield to Sunderland to come play, or I want to come from Deerfield to Sunderland to come play, I want to come from Greenfield to come play, is a concern of ours in terms of how much time will some of the residents actually get to play, and does this end up becoming the town subsidizing other residents of other towns because their towns don't have those typical courts. You know, right, if I'm playing there at 10 o'clock and you guys, your pickleball association thinks that they want to play at 10 o'clock. Well, I don't want to speak for your group, but I know how my group is. My courts are reserved open for open play. And if you come to my courts, of course, in Enfield, it's posted right on the sign that it's open play, but you won't get a private court that you're welcome to play in. That's how we all do it. Everybody is invited to play in with us and that they don't get. So we court. would, so you're saying the town of Sunday? That's what we prefer to do. You would have to set up something where you guys could sign up for them in advance for. Correct. Oh. Uh, okay. Sorry. You had your hand up. Through the red. Did you want to say anything or were you just. I just want to be I just wanted to say, USAPA has done extensive studies because your guys are not the only ones having an issue with this. So I implore you to either reach out to myself or to them to get some information that you might be looking at. So I'm Susan Buckland, and I am a Sunderland resident. And I wrote a letter um, and was um, encouraged to write a letter originally. And last year was very happy that we were going to have a court in our hometown. There's not a lot for people of my age or my ability. Pickleball is perfect and it's wonderful. It's social gathering. I currently have to go up to, and I've been embraced by. Uh, Sorry, Shelburne. Thank you very much, and uh, and and other places. I, and most pickleballers that I know, and I know a lot of them, they you know there's Hatfield, there's Amherst, there's Greenfield. I play all over, and I'm welcomed all over. And the part about policing ourselves or blackballing or whatever you want to call it. When people come in and they're not following the established rules of the court, they're kindly reminded what the rules are and rules are posted and, and it's our job, responsible adults, it's just our job to make sure that everyone's playing well and playing fair, following the rules. And I am, you know, I, I have to say, I'm really disappointed that it's taken a year to get to this point where I thought that we'd already agreed that we were going to have a pickleball court. Um, and then if we have to wait another year to move it someplace else, I'm, I'm stymied. I'm not quite sure how to even go forward with that. I'll give you one second, but the one behind you. Uh, hi, I'm Louise Kelly, and I'm from Sunderland, and I'm probably the pickleball traveler of Western Mass. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I play in Deerfield, I play in Conway, I I started in Shelburne, and they welcomed me. I'm not a Hilltown resident. They let me stay there for the new establishment in October of 2022. They keep me in a show. Susan was one of the ones that got grandfathered in. Joan plays in Shelburne. She's from Asheville. And we do we do, do sign-ups. They do have specific times. They play Monday, Wednesday nights. Um, right now it's like quarter six to quarter, depending on the light of the, the light in the, in the summer. Um, they play Tuesday mornings, Thursday morning, Saturday morning, and Sunday right now they're playing with eight to 10. And if you've ever been up to South Maple Street, the Cal Gym, the residents are about this close to the courts. And they do use a little soft ball. I did bring samples of different balls. Um, they don't enforce um, green paddles. Everybody has their own paddle. Some of them are quite expensive if you go and try. If you play a lot, you end up with an expensive paddle. But um, we do, they do use what's called sign-up genius. Conway does it. 
you sign up, you have it, once it's full, it's full. Um, Shelburne's always used to sign up. They use 17 because they have the college in the, in the winter time, you go inside, 17 people only. In the summertime, they'll have up to 30 on the board. Once the sign is full, you go on a waiting list um, and it works well. If you don't abide by the rules, because it's run by the recreation, that's my other question, who's gonna run this? Is it gonna be the recreation? All these programs, with, with the exception of Greenfield and Deerfield are rec. So they have a box outside with a lock on it, and there's members that have the combination, like myself. I can set up the nets, the balls are in there, the paddles that are supplied by the rec department, there's balls, and the rec department supplies paddles. Because there's people that come and say, I never want, I've never played with people, I want to play, but I don't want to buy a paddle because I don't like it. So they, and there's a program, they do new, new person, they do um, beginner lessons. That's what I was hoping to envision by having courts here, is have a program or have a committee established, which I would be willing to be on, start a program for adults, kids, new program, you know, get people interested in it, not just, that's what I was hoping for. Because I travel everywhere. Mm -hmm. They get, you know, <laughs> I just walk around with a bag and all that. And I play with John. John plays six hours a day every day a week, and that's true. <laughs> so we were, I was hoping to get like a committee and have something organized. Where and it, it is kind of an unspoken rule, especially in Shelburne. You know it when Jay and Mary Lou, they're volunteers for the rec department. And if you're not abiding by the rule, it's go find another community to take in. So it works very well in those communities. You should probably check. And they're very um well organized. They're very well um. Educated, they came from Colorado. They're in their 70s, but they've been um, they've been involved with sound mitigation. They've been involved with court setups out in those, and those are big areas where there's a lot of problems where you get 50 courts going at once. So they're they're very well educated on that. That that's a good spot. Asheville went down there because they were having a problem to check the area because it's so residential. We even have residents that actually play, and their their houses are like right there. <laughs> but I do have some samples of different balls. <laughs> That the rec department in Shelburne, you use a soccer ball. Um, in green, in some of the places you don't. Okay, great. You'll get Just all right. Do you want to go? Go for it first. Okay, I have a couple of comments. Yeah. Um, one that I I went out and measured this afternoon from that what they say is the standard wave in the corner for the lot to what the picture you had sent me is obviously not marked, but I was. Oh, there were flags out there. They're not there anymore for that. Yeah. Uh, probably when they mow. Yeah. But um, I measured somewhere between seventy five and hundred feet from the corner of my lot, I suppose, and um, just when. Jeff, it says that you said that um, you contacted people at the project and no one had expressed concerns or because we, you sent me an email. I don't remember if I responded on email or person, but definitely had concerns about the noise. Um, I think I was referring to at the time that, that this was oh. being considered by the CPC and that made it. But yes, I, 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 I that wasn't clear. I, Oh, so, uh, John Wurgis, um, <laughs> a direct product of the body. Um, I don't know if I'm pro pickleball or I guess pickleball. I like the, what I'm hearing about self governance, um, sound remediation. I'm, I'm curious about the VM setup there. How tall is it? Is it a block views of the mountain? Um, is it transparent? But you get glass? Is it, you know, <laughs> glass. It's, it's a metal fence. Mm -hmm. and kind of, it, how tall? We say about we say about six feet. And just the main building, we'll say yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other part is landscape all the way around it as well. Um, so so people get the school the parking lot. The south of neighbors to the west. There's neighbors, but there's their backyard, and of course the, the north is all plain fields. So that's how it's set up. So. Yeah, they actually have some. I have a study. I have a study. Thank you. Um, so that, um, you're comparing it to other uses, like um, the Friday night football game and baseball. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, some of these communities, it's constant. Like the play is constant. And 600 members in this area seems like a huge number of people. So, your course, how, how um, of the time available, Play how 
How used are they? Is that 100% usage? 100% usage. We're going to say Sunday, Sunday, we're going to say 10 to 2, generally speaking. We try to stop the whole time so people will show us. I would say Tuesday, Thursday, we're going to say 5 30 till 7 or 8. And then we're going to discuss the schedule. Yeah, we're going to have to start the time. It is the end time. Yeah, that's 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 the end time. So, well, I mean, so, so uh, when we when we have a start time, people can and start. This everybody knows that people will be on the court at that time. Uh, our busiest day that we've had recently was this past Sunday. Um, by eleven a.m., I don't think anybody was there. And if somebody came later in the day, I don't know about that, but I was there with a big group. Um, nine to maybe eleven o'clock, and then it gets it was, like well, it, yeah, it, it, got, it gets hot, uh -huh. but it's definitely not in use. Uh, I don't think I don't think it would be in use today, for example. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of days mm -hmm. uh, after school right now. Mm -hmm. No one's there. It's, I would say it was probably late at eight o'clock. You know, it's, 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 it's a little bit like. <laughs> Okay. Um, you want? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm Justice Bisky. I'm a director of butter. I live at 123 North Main Street. I have a brief presentation with some materials to uh, garner this discussion. If I'm allowed to sign in, Jeff, uh, I can try to remote, or I can send you the PowerPoint presentation. I also have hard copy sports select board. It's considerations for the locating of new pickleball courts on town owned property. And it will also give some examples, um, photos of what soundproofing and acoustical fencing looks like. Okay. And for everyone else, I will pull it up in a minute. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Let me know if it's not working, please. You see, I'm going to copy. I'm trying to be so PG 13 rated in real life. <laughs> All right. Um, so, wanted to begin this presentation considerations for the locating of new pitfall courts on town owned property. Uh, I just want to preface this by saying I understand the importance of physical activity. I work in healthcare. I fully believe that um, movement is medicine, motion is motion. I have an 82 year old father that recently started pickleball by playing at the Greenfield YMCA, so I definitely see the health benefits of it. Um, However, that is an indoor facility and being a direct butter to the proposed location of this pickleball site, I do have some concerns. All right, the outline of this today, we're talking about pickleball, uh, why the community benefits, the pushback, want to examine the conflict a little bit and then talk about best practices emerging for locating a pickleball in communities. So when you think about pickleball, it was created in 1965 in Seattle, Washington by a family that I heard got bored with golf and they wanted something to do before dinner. So they decided like, hey, let's take over a badminton court and try to use pickleball. Um, and so they tweaked around some things. They called it pickleball. There's rumors that it was named after their family dog or that the wife of the family decided um, it was called pickleball because they were kind of cobbling together some equipment uh, that had never been used for to play the sport. And pickleball is the name of, uh, or pickles are what they call it, and crew for rowing of kind of the rejects that get the second boat that's not as fast, but it's hanging together. There's a large pickleball community in the United States, and from what I'm hearing too, uh, globally around here, regionally. It is the fastest growing sport in the United States currently. Here's some statistics uh, from the Sports and Fitness Industry Association. Currently in the United States, we have 36.5 million and growing rapidly pickleball players. Uh, you can see the intense growth of pickleball and why it's wanted. You can see there's a limited number, even though it's about 14,000 places to play pickleball. Um, and the age bracket, it 
was geared originally towards seniors, that it was something that was a little less low impact than tennis, so um, older people like my 80s year old father could play. Now it's everyone. It's for everyone. The highest demographic this past year, I think, was around um, mid-30s people were to it. They're also making a lot of money off of pickleball, and when it comes to challenges of these materials, finding these noise absorbing rackets or um, using different balls, they're finding out the more and more people that play pickleball, because it is growing so rapidly, the more the problems it is causing in communities. <laughs> All right, and the pushback, uh, we've alluded to a little bit of that tonight through some of the discussion, but basically the rapid growth and construction of new pickleball courts in the United States, it, it has these consequences that we're only learning now through mass media and newspaper articles. Um, you'll see in the select board package, you'll see a couple articles about the uh, compressive pop of pickleball, how it's causing people um, health conditions and causing conflict with towns of the location of these courts that seemed like a good idea at the time, then it was actually built or was converted from tennis courts causing problems. Um, specifically, pickleball courts that were built in residential areas have created conflict within these communities. Mm -hmm. um, and again, kind of our area, most communities and individuals didn't realize beforehand that there were negative impacts to building pickleball courts in residential areas. Um, I think this pertains to the Town Conservation and Preservation Act and discussing we'd love to have people all in town. Um, definitely let's get seniors and other people active. Oh, we've got this lovely Riverside Park, um, handicap accessible walkways, we've got the little outlook. It seems like a great area, but is that the best place for it? It's one of the last green spaces. It's located right next to the Southern Light Town Library, it doesn't need a quiet zone. And then looking at where it is, uh, as my neighbor Judy just alluded to, it is less than um, you know, 100 feet away from residential property lines. We don't, again, people all, a lot of these towns don't want the complex to happen. They do, they pop up because they're the first to have it. And then you get a lot of outside traffic coming in and no police and regulations for it. So we've got some in-state conflicts that are currently happening in Massachusetts. You see some examples here. Um, it's just a multitude of issues happening, specifically state related to Massachusetts. You can see in the mass that they've started opening some pickleball on courts due to the noise concerns. Um, you can see uh, also in the town of Amherst, they recently halted all of their plans and they had about a quarter million dollar funding for pickleball courts because it was um, getting uh, neighbors cause, causing massive issues and discussions. And then you've got uh, you know lawsuits that are developed because of this, that it's a rush and hurry to build these courts. And you can see in West Falmouth Mass courts um, will allow pickleball for one more year, people closing uh, that pickleball court permanently to open new courts that specifically had a setback um, based on lesson learned of, hey, this did not work out for us. We listened to town feedback, we listened to pickleball players. This is what we can do. We gotta have it more than 500 feet from property lines. Uh, currently in the state of Massachusetts, municipalities and neighborhood groups of mass, we have 20 plus conflicts happening in us in the court system in Massachusetts, and then across the country, dozens of lawsuits. Uh, now, on a national conflict level, from my research that I've done, this is fascinating. In the um, city of Sentinel, Colorado, which is a suburb of Denver, so big college town, kind of like us, um, they had to put in new pickleball ordinances in moratoriums because they discovered, yes, pickleball is uh, disruptive to direct the butters, very loud, and it's causing health concerns. You can see in the highlighted yellow areas that based on what um, the city of Sentinel, Colorado learned, outdoor pickleball is known to create a notable, notable change in the acoustic environment of the areas surrounding pickleball courts that is different in comparison to other forms of outdoor recreational activities. I mentioned that because again, fourth generation proud resident of Sunderland grew up in that Sunderland Riverside Park playing soccer, playing t-ball. Uh, that was never a problem. This is different. How it's different, you can see again on the next line in yellow. It's an impulsive sound that the pickleball paddle makes when it's impacted with the pickleball itself. Uh, it's very sensitive to the uh, human frequency range of hearing. And it's that continuous impulsive noise sound that irritates people. Um, it makes it difficult to relax. It makes it difficult to concentrate and sleep. Um, in the concentration key for me, being a few hundred feet away from the courts potentially, I work from home frequently. I'm not going to be able to concentrate on my work. I need my job to live. I need that paycheck. I need to be able to focus. Um, again, some more things about sound, greater noise and other forms of sound. Um, I've seen that in letters to the select board. Thank you for putting us on the agenda this uh, 
evening where it's 70 decibel level, uh, levels. And moving on, let's talk about stack box. Jeff had spoken about this a little bit earlier. Judy had spoken about it earlier as well. You've got SIGs, for example, from 121 North Main Street, approximately 70 feet. You've just got over that 40 foot um, volleyball court. And then you've got this pedestrian walking sidewalk through the side park. And then right after the benches, right there on that sidewalk, you're gonna have a pickleball court. You're gonna put two of them in there, approximately 75 feet away from the property line. On um, the plans that were sent from the town of Southern to Abutters, um, it doesn't list that actual uh, foot amount, but it's approximately 70 feet. It's very, very, very close. The, from the research I've done, and I think Jeff's probably seen too, they're talking about required setbacks from property lines. Should it be 500? Should it be 600? What are the ramifications if you go closer than 500 feet? Um, again, the Sentinel Colorado, they had talked about new ports, and their legislation they decided it needs to be over 600 feet. Residential right zone. And we are in the village center, um, right to live, right to work, want people to enjoy it, but also want that green space. And also we want to be respectful of neighbors that have been in this community for years and live there. And then another example, Park City, Utah, also requires a minimum 600 uh, foot setback. These towns are being, being very brave, putting their foot down, but they've also listened to their residents in the area to make these decisions. Best practices, how to measure distance. Um, the distance really, and Jeff, I'd be curious for the 200 feet, it should be from the edge of the pickleball court to the property lines of the residential area. So when you say 200, I'm just curious. That that was from the closest point of the residence that I found to the approximate location. Because even that fence that goes by John, Judy, Mike, and Emily's, there's still a boundary stone that there's a little cut through. So in case a volleyball went over the lawn, um, or that fence that you're able to walk through there. So it's still off that set from that fence even a little bit more. Um, but you would just when you're measuring distance, things to consider as we're looking at a Riverside Park location. And if you want to put it directly in that area, that close to five residential households in uh, North Main Street there, it's going to be less than 100 feet. Um, and if you're measuring that, it, there's ramifications of what happens when you're that close and the noise reverberations. So going on to noise and sound abatement. When building new pickleball courts within 600 feet of residential, uh, recommended that over 600 feet from residential, it's not, it is often uh, not required to have a noise study or sound if it's over 600 feet. However, if it's less than 600 feet, I'm gonna go back to my previous appearances at the select board meeting back in March, and then again, in my email in April, of let's do a sound study. If we really want that close to a butters, let's have acoustical sound engineers come out here and measure that and get the proof. Um, if you're trying to do sound abatement, and I know there's a proposed plan, preliminary plans, eight foot fence around it, that's just an eight foot fence. There was no plans for acoustical fencing or sound abatement, but let me show you what that could look like for pickleball courts. Now, if you're, depending on if you do 600 or 500 feet, if you're doing level one, um, this is what it can look like for the sound abatement. There's an acoustic fence, there's um, some other brands, there's one local in Connecticut, it runs about 240 to $280 a square foot, it could be more, I'm sure it's going up, it's pickleball becomes more and more popular. Or you could do sound absorbing panels, and that's what it looks like. But again, you might need a higher fence because if you're talking about containing that noise, it's the only way you're going to contain pickleball noise is if you do a line of state green field and you have it indoors. Or if you do a senior center in the building, you're in Sunderland, build indoors. Or if you're going to rent out some ports at Maple Ridge Court in Sunderland, you know, like, um, give a discount to or passes to Sunderland residents, do it indoors, try it in there, see how popular it is, see how many actual residents in Sunderland use it. Uh, but really you can't contain the noise. It's just going to buffer it, maybe 10 decibel levels. It's not going to completely eliminate it, but we'll never eliminate it. All right, so level one, if you're doing that, it would be cheaper. It's uh, about one eighth of an inch thick, comes in standard sizes of six by um, 30 feet. Not a miracle solution. Again, not going to entirely rid the noise. Neighbors are still going to hear it. Anyone walking on that pedestrian path is still going to hear it. Anyone in the library, town hall is still going to hear it. Uh, needs to be deployed correctly at further distances from residential. It's not especially helpful when close to residential like ours would be the less than 100 feet. 
Level two abatement, uh, more expensive, um, absorbs sound instead of reflecting sound, comes in standard sizes of six by four, uh, necessary for when the courts are closer to the residential homes. Looks a little more green space too. But notice uh, the plans they had uh, from the architect, they just had the fencing, they did not have any panels attached to it. That's where the cost is really going to creep up if we put panels, which is the right thing to do to buffer the sound if you absolutely need it there. Not gonna eliminate it, gonna cost more though. And then um, selection of best practices for these pickleball courts. If pickleball court sites within 500 to 600 feet um, should be reviewed by a qualified acoustical sound engineer in the site selection phase, they will likely require some sound one abatement. Pickleball courts that are less than 500 feet from residential will likely require a level two noise abatement. It's going to get more costly to buy those materials because you're that much closer to the homes that would be impacted. And then other things to know on North Main Street here, we are two story and multiple story homes uh, located close to pickleball courts that can require additional sound abatement. Sound travels over fencing and this can impact other level windows and rooms on the second floor and above. Taller fencing with sound abatement helps. So you're looking at higher than an eight foot fence with um, sound proofing. Topography, similar to housing with floors above ground level or homes sitting at an elevation higher than the proposed pickleball courts can be difficult to shield and noise with a barrier. And then also lastly, um, water, if there is any water in the ground in close to residential property, it impacts noise levels. I do mention that because I'm concerned with the resurfacing that would be needed for that sloped area right by the library, right by the town hall, right by the residentials. We have had an issue massively with water the past couple of years, in particular senior housing across the street. But in the back, I can remember playing ball and having those fields flood when I was a kid. So if you level that out, it's it's uh, funneling some surface water towards our homes, towards our basement and area of the backyards that we haven't had before. That is a massive concern to our foundations of our homes and being so close, it could come. So that's it for the presentation. I'll stop the sharing. Is there anything you want me to go back to or have any additional questions? I thank you for listening though, and hopefully the visuals of what some of the info looks like helps. Yeah, I think the paper copies is great to go over for the rest of your own thing. Your presentation, the interest of the other questions about the presentation. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course, Do we not have outdoor concerts at the library if it's a quiet zone. Heck, you better wait until you're called. Oh, sorry, you can put behind you with your hands on. So, oh, that's all right. Let's start with the gentleman. Right there. Yep. Western, Western, North Main, yeah. also on the spider out back. <laughs> Just building off of uh. Just this presentation here, uh, and I I heard the comments about the people that play all the time and they're going to police the rules and regulations, and I I believe that I think they will. Right? They play and they they're there all the time. <clears throat> My concern, of course, along with this, is the location of this. And Jessica brought up some very good points about the, um, potential flooding, water runoff. The fence thing is really a big issue. And I went out and I looked at some other locations in town. I was around when we built the elementary school and we allotted more than enough land down here for expansion. And there's some ball fields, a uh, softball field and a soccer field there. I looked at two different locations down there, which would be ideal for two pickleball courts. The first thing is, there's no residents right around it. So the noise uh, pollution issue, I don't think it would be even a, a factor down there, okay? Which immediately, you know, causes, uh, gives it an A rating for me to go down there. The way the land has been developed down there around the school, I think there's very little grading. There's very little runoff you'd have to worry about. Of course, you have to do some in the construction of it. But the way it's set up, I think the construction costs would probably be lower than putting it out here where you've got to really dig down, level, uh, take care of drainage, take care of runoff. <laughs> so I believe the whole uh, project to put it down there would be less money, actually. And now the money's been appropriated, CPA, you've got plans, architect plans to build this. You're really talking about changing the location and that's it. 
the other factors can still be employed down there. So I would suggest that the board and, and uh, whatnot really look in <laughs> to a location down there, put the, put the courts down there. There's minimum impact on residential noise issues. There's parking, uh, rules and regulations, you establish them, and I totally agree with these players. They'll, they'll police it. I don't think there'd be any problem with that. Um, you know, the, the people who play all the time, they know the, what goes on. And if there's somebody in there abusing it, I think they'll take care of it. So I don't really think that's an issue with that. Location definitely is. This would have a tremendous impact on a butters here on uh, North Main and maybe even on School Street, I don't know. But by going down to the school, there's a perfect spot down there. There's actually two, but the, the first one I would choose there's there's an area there with no residences, and I don't think there'd be any uh, issue with uh, noise impact on any residences at all. The, the big problem with the school was the same problem that exists at the high school, was just that during school hours, you can't use it. Well, and in terms of paying for your buck, kind of a consideration for this, the town doesn't really want to spend a whole pile of money to have all of the hours that they're saying is the prime hour people are using this have it be unavailable. So totally get your, your point of the exact location for all the other reasons, but in terms of the actual usability of it, the point of this is not to just put it in the place that's the most that's the most out of the way, because we could find some field in the middle of nowhere where it could be, it's put it both considering that and also having it be a place that's going to get the use, it's going to be able to be used during those hours. And so the school was actually one of the things that I had thought of when we started talking about this mm -hmm. almost a year and a half ago, and that was a big concern was the time we don't we, we don't want to a have to pull out courts that people can only use from seven a.m. to nine a.m. and from five p.m. to to dark. Nor do we want to end up having random people showing up on school grounds during school hours when there's kids there, because then it starts getting hard to be like, is that person there for pickleball or is that person something that the principal should be concerned? There's someone on the, the school grounds. That's sort of a whole ball of wax that we're trying real hard to avoid. Um, the whole question of other locations in town is something that, believe me, we have talked about quite a bit. Um, we haven't come up with a location outside of this yeah. one that the town has access to, that is zoned for, you know, all the things and whatnot, um, and that doesn't raise up other butter questions or other issues with, with things like watershed and that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I would love to be able to say, oh yeah, we have this whole whole other you know field right over here that we didn't even think about. Um, and that's sort of that was the first question I asked for Dave is that you know, is, has there been any new developments in good locations for this? Um, be, be, beyond that, and this is something that I believe you brought up, if we do change location, that is in effect starting from scratch. We have to get a brand new study. We have to get brand new plans. We have to get approved through, through, through the um, through the town meeting. It's basically saying, yeah, we're extracting this whole plan and starting fresh. And I'm saying that that isn't necessarily one of the paths that we might take, but just that, just to for, for clarity, that is not a small deal. It would be pushing the project off probably a year or more. It would be going back to the and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe going back to the design firm and asking them to come up with a new design because you can't just say, we'll pick this design up and plop it over there. They have to do their whole process. Um, things like watershed, again, you're talking about runoff, you can't just plop this design over here and make it work. Um, maybe it's nice to be good, <laughs> but that's, that's sort of unfortunately sort of not. Does it have to go back? It doesn't have to go back for time meeting, does it? Oh, it does. Yeah, the article says pickleball courts at Riverside Park. Okay. So that's what was voted. Um, and yeah, it would be, we couldn't, we couldn't pay for somebody to design pickleball courts not at Riverside Park with the current funding. So we couldn't even start the redesign process until uh, July 2025. Yeah. So, again, just it's a question. Is that something that special town meeting that if we again, I'm asking just so we know in the question, if if CPA or, or if the money through special town meeting got appropriated 
saying something like at a mutually agreed upon location between the town and, you know, can you have a special town meeting vote on that and move this along without a location, but say on town owned property agreed upon between, you know, CPAs. Well, we, we'd have to talk to CPA because I don't know how flexible their processes are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we could certainly do a special town meeting and actually what I said was wrong. Um, CPA funds are available immediately, so they'd be available right after town meeting. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to prolong all of this for another year from now. If there's a way not to, if we have a means not to. I, I, this is my understanding. I assume because it says at Riverside Park, I'm happy to reach out to council. And if they say, oh, the select board says it's fine to look at other locations um, and you're comfortable doing that, I, I could certainly ask council for that. And then you can move well, that yeah, way. It doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, right? yeah. If you don't mind. Might as well ask. Okay. Um, uh, I just, I'm gonna, well, I just want yeah, to, and I don't know the ins and outs of the, of the uh, rules, but I would think that the money's been, I agree, you got to go to another town meeting, but I think they have a special town meeting and you come out with, and even though they might have to redo the design, this basic design, and say, okay, here it is, we're really going to the same show, except we need. A special town meeting and reappropriate. I don't know why you couldn't move that along, even in less than a year. Right. And I'm just, it, my whole thing is, even if we don't have an exact location, but if we can have, you know, to a mutual agreed upon location between REC and CPA and select board, something like that. Again, I don't know if that's possible. And, you know, I'm sure Jeff will follow up. Was the plan to have recreation sort of in charge of this or not? It was just it, courts. It was yeah. to install courts. And so that's where some of this, in my opinion, becomes a little concerning because my understanding was these were being installed for the town of Sunderland, mm -hmm. not for the Pickleball Association or a group, right? So that if on a Tuesday afternoon, I want to bring my grandkids over there and just let them try playing pickleball, I wouldn't want to go there and find out that this is already reserved by a group every Tuesday afternoon till the end of time. Honestly, I think it might be good for us to, or maybe suggest specifically to have a conversation with Jim uh, from the rec department about is this something that the rec department has the capacity and the desire to take over in terms of, you know, being in charge of it from whatever level? Um, it does sound like other communities in the area largely have their town rec department be in charge of that, with the exceptions being schools that those are outside. Of I think it definitely should be some authority, either a select board or a rec committee or, you know, Jimmy Owen, whatever, in charge of it. I mean, yeah. yeah, at least have a say in it. So, um, and yeah, I mean, with I, the policing of the rules. So. Yeah, and, and largely that, that's what, sort of what this is, is the town said, yes, we want this, but no specifics. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we spent the last year and a half doing is is us saying, well, we aren't design people, we aren't, you know, sports experts, we aren't noise experts. How can we take this very vague you want this, you want the location, here's the money, and turn that into something that works for all parties. And um, I hope that it, it tries to, to the both sides of this, that we want what's best for, for both the players and for the buyers. We want what's best for the people in town and people out of town. We want the best for everybody. Um, and finding out where that, what what compromise that's going to be is what this is all about. Why we've been, why we've been spending the last year and a half talking about this and going back and forth with people. Um, so I just want to get that you showed your hand up back there? Mike Ahern, 127 North Main. Initially, I lived at 38 School Street. You have 150 yards north of 38 School Street that's one rectangular piece of unused property. 
We, we looked at that. It's a beautiful spot, and it's far away from yeah. my backyard, which is 20 steps from the corner of your proposed pickleball court. Correct if I'm wrong, yeah. but that was too close to the river. Is that correct? Yeah, that was actually one of our first. That was one of our first thoughts. Right, so we're going over there. And, and unfortunately, and there's regulations, state regulations about how close to the river we can be and can't actually be. Well, that you only have to look 30 miles south and see what Springfield's done along the river. I mean, if they can do it, why can't we? No, but we can't. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, just, I, I don't. I don't want to. Sorry. Secondly, I've been 20 years on the Veterans Committee, and you have a beautiful Veterans Mall out here, and it was set up to be a place of somber peace for people to sit at the benches. And I, I really, I really have a question about the noise not only from my point of view of living 20 steps from the corner of this thing, but the Veterans Project out here. I don't want that forgotten about. Good point. Thank you. Yeah, but it's a question for the um, If we made a, a stipulation in the bylaws about um, sound remediating equipment, how much compliance do you predict people would, you know, I mean, would they be able to do that? I don't know, $100, maybe is that too, too expensive for a racket? I don't know. People, people, um, people won't do that. They won't. If, if, it's, if it's owned by the recreation, if the recreation department, like say Shelburne, they have paddles and they have, I, I brought different balls if you want to see a different outside ball, one that's a little softer, so it has a less of a pop. They use those in Shelburne, that's what they use in Shelburne specifically. There's also like different paddles. They make different paddles, but if the rec department bought some, then they would be out for anybody to use. But you're still going to have people come that have their own paddles and their own preference. It's hard. That's hard to enforce. But if, if the rec department was having a program and they had those kind of paddles and balls, that's what you'd be using. Never, never having to play. I don't know. You should try it. It's a dainty. A huge bad and bad. If that was something that we. We do play as, as compromise. Yeah, they are right. A lot of people have them, but to enforce it, it would be very difficult. Well, and enforcement is a whole question of its own side. I'm sure, you know, screwed around saying it, but the only real enforcement option you have, other than uh, counting on people being human beings, is. Having the butters call the police when there's somebody there at two o'clock in the morning making noise, or at six a.m. or outside of whatever the the state or local laws say for noise complaint issues, just as a noise complaint issue. Um, I don't. I'm not saying necessarily that's going to be a, a huge rampant problem, but it's something I want to consider about how much of our town's police resources we're using, not necessarily for the members of the the organizations that do their job. But so you mass students who live in our apartment complexes get drunk inside at 3 a.m. They want to go down there and, and hit some balls around. I'm not saying that's necessarily a likely thing to happen, but we have to consider a limited police budget time effort. We almost always have one officer, if not no officers, on any given time. And do we want to spend our resources answering noise complaints? That is definitely one of the con considerations that we have to take into consideration. Um, I'm not saying necessarily that like the, the evidence shows that the Shelburne's calling the cops every night or anything like that, but just that, you know, this is a, one of those discussions where we have to look at the totality of all the different factors, and that is unfortunately one of them. Yes. That's why you need um, a committee to work with the rec department, lock the gates, lock the gates, have someone open the gates when the pickleball courts are open. They're only going to get used half a year. Those courts can't be, those have to be locked in the winter. Those nets have to come down. The wind sock has to come down. If anybody goes in there with a metal shovel and tries to um, tries to shovel those, they'll ruin the surface. So those are only half your courts anyways. You can't play outside with the snow and you can't shovel those. Those have to be locked. So it's only like a half year use. You're probably, I'm probably like April, when did frontier April? When Tennessee starts, that's typically in March or April. March, April. And then by November, 
once it snows, no one's using those. You well, can't, it would ruin the service. And that's sort of why I think it's important that we, at the very least, include Jim in the conversation, is because if we are going to end up having a Let's say we decide that we want to make that we, we have someone come out and walk them up at the end of Sunday and open them up on Tuesday or whatever because Monday is a special day for that. Or end the season closing down, beginning next season opening up, things like that. Someone has to do that. And so, you know, I'd love to be able to say, oh, yeah, the Pickleball Association will come and do that for us. But I have a guarantee that's going to happen. It's, not, do I an associ- it. it's not an association that you can come. We it's have a like club we have our Facebook pages, and if it goes, I'm coming down to play. Anybody? Can, so we need four people. It's just like yeah. word of mouth. So it's not like a and they have a paddle system. So if you get six people, you put your paddle down. Winners usually winners stay, losers come off, and it just rotates in. It's a very it's a very smooth process, and everybody's very polite, and it's because it's such a social. It's such a social thing. People just enjoy. There's like in a year and a half, I've met people I've never met in my entire life, and it does a lot of good for things. We raised money for Hatfield Elementary. We raised um, money for the food bank just recently. That was in the that was in the paper. I mean, it does a lot of good for our community. It could raise money for this library when they need something. So, but I think that if you have if you're looking if you put out there and looking for volunteers. To be part of this, I think you have no problem getting a volunteer to open the gates or lock the gates. Or there's a lot of people that play that are retired. I don't know who plays in Sunderland. I, I'm from Sunderland. I, I play mostly people from Shelburne and everywhere else, but Sunderland. So I, I think there are people. If you put it out there and you ask for help, I think you'll get volunteers to help. That's why I think. Well, and I do like the idea of there being a committee, you know, a volunteer driven committee. And I think he'll. Need, I think he needs some help with it. Um, yeah, and, and largely that would certainly go a long way in relating my concerns about if there is an official committee in town about who has the responsibility but also the purview in, in, in practice. Because I'm not saying that the select board doesn't necessarily want to become the new major, you know, okay, <laughs> runners of a select like, ball court, but we shouldn't be the ones who are doing day to day stuff there. The question does become who is that person? And if that's Jim, again, we should have a conversation with Jim about that, but also that has to be consideration in terms of town funding is if we're asking Jim to pick up the thing, that means we have to appropriate more money for the rec department to make it give him the hours to do so. Um, you know, there's 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 bigger questions like that. Um right, and it's the same thing. I mean, we even talked at one point library. You know, go in there to get the key to open it, things like yeah. that. Um, you know, and then that kind of limits it down to the library hours. But, you know, it... and bathrooms, bathrooms are frequently locked. So, with the added additional parking that's going to be uh, playing in the parking lot area and the limited hours close on Sunday, that would be a prime day and match with the pickle long courts. That would all have to be looked at in addition to the noise of the event. Yes, sir. A couple things I'd like to just add to it. Um, first of all, can I ask you a question, please, Ms. Kubinski? Sure. What were the dates on those courts and the problems and all that? I mean, have they been rapidified since, or is there something brand new? They're all the same. They're all recent. They're They're all recent. recent. Okay. So, okay. One of them was in here. There was a date. I think it was 2022. Was... That's a statistic, yes. And then if you're looking at the dates in Falmouth and uh, Norwich and Amherst, that was just in January. Yeah, they they have, they have um, the other thing I'd like to know, and in, in all this conversation we're all having, I think it's excellent. But why wasn't it earlier than this? Why is that one year, a year, more than a year from when it was voted in? Right, so I think part of it was the general statement of Riverside Park. I think the thought was, again, behind the old Ahern House, that that would be away from, and that was determined not a suitable spot. But you can't just stop the thing. So we did stop it. So this was actually staked out out there when, you know, the new location came. There were purple flags out there, and I'm sure that's how Jessica and a lot of the neighbors were able to kind of see where it was going to be. I mean, that was before March 29th, though. Dude, the, the, the short answer to your question is, is that 
nothing in government moves as quickly and it's taken it's that. taken a year and three months just to Have get from just to get no, no, just to get to the conversation because first we had to go out to bid for or we had to submit you know request for plans and then we had to get the plans and whatnot. The the fact that there was even a problem to discuss wasn't brought up to us until far after that town meeting happened. And so it's not like we knew at town meeting a year and two months ago or whatever it was that this was going to be a problem. Nobody brought up any issues at that town meeting. Nobody brought up any issues to us before that town meeting. That town meeting happened and it's only been after that that issues have been brought to our attention and we've had to go through the process of all the red, sorry, all the red tape that takes just to get the plan out there to bid is a year. And that's that's really what our concern is. That's why we're we're, we're having this discussion is that if we do go a different direction, if everything goes well, it's like a year plus out because of it takes this many months for this part of it to get done, this many months for this part of it done. You know, it'd be lovely if we were it would be lovely if we were like a, a private organization where we could just be like, hey, tomorrow I'm gonna call a construction company and get them down there and they're gonna start pouring concrete. It doesn't work like that in in, in private in public realm. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Believe me. It's true. Yeah. Um but no, it's just you know, and after that sort of thing that it, we have talked about this probably 15, 20 times in the last year. Um and we meet some at most once a week. So, you know, we've talked about probably a third of our meetings over the course of the last um, year, as well as in numerous emails back and forth between Jeff and members of the board and between Jeff and members of the budding properties, um, back and forth between the, the company. We had the, the man from the design company come in and ask a lot of these questions to him directly, like, hey, what can we do about soundproofing? What can we do about this? How tall are those fences going to be? Can we make those fences yeah, taller? Yeah, well, I think they had them at six feet, didn't they? Yeah, so we said, yeah, can we make them taller? We also wanted to ask, you know, can we make the fences such that if the sound is not a problem, they're good as they are. If the sound is a problem, can we then convert those fences into soundproofing without having to rip them down and start from scratch? These are all questions we've been asking, and you know, I, you know, it's not that we just picked up after a year of not paying attention to it. it, it it's it's that. It took us this long to get to a place where we could have this discussion and have the board know where we know what we know now in order to do so. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, but I understand. Fair enough. <laughs> yes. Well, I just wanted to say, and to uh, answer Tom's question, a lot of these people that play all the time, they know the game, they know all about it. A lot of us, myself included, didn't really know anything about. Of course, we heard of pickleball, but when we started researching some information on it. Uh, just about every article I looked on in regard to pickleball, there's always a section about noise. There's from the lawsuits to closing courts to there's even a gentleman that wrote a how to start pickleball in your community, how to set up courts and organizations and groups and all that, teams. And he does two and a half paragraphs about noise. Be aware of the noise. So a lot of us myself didn't really know how bad this was so that's reason you know to address some of the late comers into this and that's why oh absolutely and, and, and to be clear i'm not saying that, that, that you know shame on you you didn't come to us before town meeting you know i guess what i'm saying more than anything else is that all of this information has become emergent to all of us you know no one on this board nor did anyone in order that many of the people in the audience know all the facts before we've gotten started in this and so you know, sort of by design, it's been a bumpy process because of that. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I know that there's a there's an appetite to have the courts be done faster than not, and I totally understand why that would be because you want to be using them. But we have to do this the right way, which is obviously why we're here today. We don't want to cut up and then close down yeah. because of the loss. Exactly, and then the absolute last thing that I think anyone in this room wants is for the town to throw a whole bunch of money in the hole on the ground. That then gets shut down and we spend even more money to tear down next year. That's the last thing that any of us want to do. So we want to be really sure before we break ground on anything that we're not setting ourselves up for issues, that we've considered every possible contingency, that we've considered the, the noise, that we've considered the thing, but that we haven't just considered those. We've also considered those and weighed those against the health and well being of the members of our community. You know, this is a public health issue. 
uh, outside of all the other issues as well. And so it, it's funny. <laughs> um, yeah. And do you want to add anything on that? I just have a question for Mr. Weston. You had said you looked at a couple different locations in town. Did you look at, where else did you look at? The well, no, at school? two locations. Oh, Apple school. school. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you Yeah, looked. the, the uh, behind the uh, cafeteria, there's that little pavilion. If you go out further, going toward Rickstrom uh, Sheds yeah. there, that was, that's the most perfect spot. It's level. I doubt there'd be major drainage issues. The other spot is when you drive in on the other side of the parking lot is would, would be looking over toward um, uh, Old Amherst Road. And there's a there's a nice spot there also. So, I mean, those are two I looked at that I think were perfect locations. Um, you'd accommodate parking. You could either higher fences. I'm not sure of 10 feet, you said? Uh, I think it's 12. 12, 12 feet. In other words, you could have, you could really put the whole thing together down there, the whole package, without any impact on a butter's due to noise. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand that. I, and I don't know why I mean you might have to work with Ben on getting some kind of a thing about people coming in during the day, during the summer, no problem because the school's out. Now the rest of the time, I don't know. You could probably work out something, you know, getting people in there to play. Here again, there's always issues that you've got to work out. But I think the, the locations down here are perfect. Mr. Hearn, I saw your hand. Yeah, that uh, piece, my understanding, goes all the way back to the back door of Rock Warner's property and our present fire chief. That whole lot was given by the family that, that sold the fire chief his house. They owned all the way to 116. So you, the farmers, I think, access off of 116. You may not even need a curb cut. You could park as many cars as you want down there and put your pickleball court even in the middle of that field. It's town property, and it was left for the town to use for any use they deem fit, according to people that live on South Main Street that I've talked to. It's got to be uh, more than 15 acres. I don't know much about that problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, as, as I said, I know, thought there, the town was allowed to use the access road. That they didn't think it owned the property, but I could be wrong. Oh, well, that's funny to look um, into. Yes. I just wanted to say, I don't know where the exact boundaries are for the school property. I'm sure Jeff can find it. Right. Now, what Nikki's referring to, well, that is a big field. I mean, that would accommodate, you know, football courts easily and parking, which would keep people from not even having to go to the school yard. And here again, I don't know about what, that lot that Nikki's talking about. I know, I know the lot, but I don't know where the boundaries are. But yeah. That's a good possibility, too. I didn't even think of that part, but yeah. I'm sure Jeff can find where those I'm boundaries are. Sure if you can't, fire. <laughs> there you go. Lose lose with this stuff every day. Just give their opinion. Do you have any of the advocates? I can connect them. I can connect you. But do you personally, does anybody about you do? Uh, no. But yes, I, I know someone can speak to you who does it, but I'll take a ball for it. I'm Joan Jam. I live in Asheville, but I play in Shelburne and I have played in South Carolina and whatever. Um, and I would just like to invite anybody who wants to to come up to the Shelburne Falls courts during the times when we're playing and see just how close the houses and the apartments are around us mm -hmm. and listen to the noise. Um, we had a fellow who is in our group do a sound study. And uh, granted, it was an informal sound study, but he found the highest decibel levels coming out of our play where it's supposed to laughter. And uh, whatever, it was louder than the football ball balls. I mean, of course. Plus, it's not a constant noise. There are breaks. You know, the ball only goes back and forth two or three times, and you stop. You have to re regroup. You have to call on a score. Um, but I think really just going to listen to a game might put some people's mm -hmm. concerns at ease. 
Is, is there any abatement there in place? No, not just no. And the houses are within yeah. 100 feet. Fully trees, that kind of thing. It's it's right on the road, so mm -hmm. there's there's really no confusion. Yeah, yeah. 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 but it's got to be just like a coat. Watch some It's the next to the cold gym in Shelburne. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Highland Village would be out there. Yeah. That's it. Certainly. Yeah. And there's Saturday and Sunday morning. Um, Tuesday, Thursday morning. But yeah, just more information to have. Yep, is there an opportunity, such as uh, I believe Conway, of using the elementary school gym for pickleball for Sunderland residents during summertime? Again, this might be something in the record school, but I know some other communities that it's been there. If there are issues with installing outdoor courts, that they were reverting to other spaces that were interior, such as in schools. Um, and I'm not going to say it's not an yeah. option because I don't know. Um, yeah. We'd have to look into it. Um, because that's perhaps a way for town center to ease into it and see the popularity and actual use of actual residents. Yeah. If there's a more immediate need for pickleball now, uh, we don't want to you know hurry up and make a mistake. Yeah. Um. I, don't, I honestly I don't know what what would even be involved in in that. That would have to be a, a conversation with Ben probably. Or Maple Ridge Church, strike the deal with them. I know that was a hot location by a senior housing and an apartment complex there, and that already exists. That was tennis for years. Yep. So I think that we've largely covered all the questions on both sides. Um, I'm sure that we could probably find more things to talk about for the board. Um, as it stands right now, the board has not made any decision on this. That was the point of this meeting was for us to get information so we can pull on it and think on it and get some feedback so that we can kind of get a, am I happy to say check on, am I, is my thinking on this right? Am I representing the people who are supposed to represent properly and whatnot? Um, so the board, sorry. Just want to make sure that nobody online. Has, oh yeah, sorry. Thank you. I always forget the people online. <laughs> um, anyone online have any comments they wanted to throw in before closing public comment? Um, say that no. All right. Um, so the board will individually think this will be a subject of many future select board meetings to discuss in public session. Um, we encourage people to, if you see that as a line item on our agenda, to tune in either via Zoom in person if you want to come in. Everyone's always welcome to come here. Well, Steve Hayes is here. Um, we always prefer it was for less contentious things, but you know. That is the way the world. Um, or um, via app, we also do um, we most of the time uh, broadcast our uh, support meetings that are there. Um, and as of, as always, please continue to communicate via Jeff to the board if you have any further information, any further comments, anything follow up today, any other suggested locations for the for the um, pickle course, anything like that. Anything you can do to make our job easier um, will help. <laughs> Move everything along. So, not putting the responsibility on you, but just saying that if you have more information that helps along the way, that would definitely. Just one final request, and I'll do your respect. backyard plan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that floor locker would work. <laughs> yeah. but, um, in all due respect, could you make sure on your agenda mm -hmm. that it's listed as pickleball, not just a discussion about nothing or public comment or whatever you list it as? Um, if you're going to talk about it, make sure. I mean, we had a pretty long discussion today. It wasn't yeah. when, excuse me, it wasn't when she was on. It was under public comments so much. Yeah, all right. It was public, public comments. comments. I just it's brought up. It's no, that was an individual meeting where I just showed up, and it was yeah, public. It was this public agenda. comments, and you brought up noise. It wasn't on the agenda. Well, that's the thing. That wasn't on the agenda. Yeah. 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 And so the, the short answer is, if we're aware of it ahead of time, absolutely. We cannot ever control someone coming in at one of our meetings and say any public comment, they can start talking about literally anything they want. No, I know that, but what I'm saying is that you're going to We're going to talk about it. What do you think the discussion is going to be about? Pick a ball. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. That being said, I think we're going to close the pickleball discussion for now. As I said, it will be an ongoing discussion going forward, um, which brings up our next item of old business, and that is another interesting one: uh, the marijuana social equity policy. Pickleball, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when all those hot buttons, <laughs> uh, social, 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 social
Um, yes, last time we talked, we had discussed <laughs> you <laughs> wrapping up something that looked like the deal. Yep. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys very much for showing up. We always appreciate having the public be involved. Um, in terms of the discussion for today, were we just did you, did you do that in one full day or okay. um, it, and it's essentially the same as Deerfield's policy. Okay, I'm sorry, we still have to conduct some business. Could you step out into the hall? I'm sorry to be rude. Thank you. Um yeah, it, it's very similar to Deerfield's. Um I think the the one change is that they said that they were gonna have like some sort of Grading rubric that counts how much social equity points they get. And um, honestly, no, do that. <laughs> it's, it's going to be more work than anybody who's going to apply to do it. So I, I just said we're going to take it into consideration and we will. Yeah. Um, no, so, no. yeah, but yeah, it's, it's very similar. And my thought is if, if you're okay with it. Um, if you want to look at it again and not vote this time, that's fine, but we would submit it to the CCC and then if they had issues with it, they would tell us what they are. And when can... does it have to be submitted by? May 1st. Ah, all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll take a late one. <laughs> the, originally, it was July 1st, 2023. It, it kept getting yeah. pushed, and eventually, May 1st was the final deadline. Okay. We didn't push, so yeah. we're giving it. That's all right. From my perspective, I feel like this is a lot of work for a move point for a town of our size and our capacity for marijuana shops. That being said, if you draft a letter that meets the minimum requirements the state has that you feel is going to match meets muster on their end, good enough for me. We can always do this down the line if for some reason something came up that was and not about it. No other comment. If you have any comments, we'll kick it back. Huh? Yeah. So from my perspective, if, if you're happy with it, I'm happy with it. Um, Dan and Crystal, do you have any? I was going to say motion to submit. <laughs> <laughs> I, with technical corrections because I yes. didn't notice like, technical I corrections. CCC, yeah. So at this time I would entertain a motion to direct Jeff to submit the application with technical corrections um on our behalf. Yeah, and then just copy us on it so yeah. we or put it in the folder so we can yep. so moved. <laughs> second. All right we have a motion made and seconded to instruct Jeff to submit the letter as written with technical corrections. Sorry. Well, just to clarify the select board is voting to adopt these policies, and then I should submit the policies that have been adopted. Yeah. Correct. Oh, so we have a okay, so okay. So I just wanted to make. Yeah. Well, let's amend the the, the motion. So I would make a motion to accept the policy as written by Jeff and forward said policy to the appropriate state government agency. Uh, my motion for us to adopt the policy and for Jeff to submit the to submit it to the state, and we get comments. That, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Second. All right, we motion made and seconded to uh, adopt the policy as written with technical corrections and submit it to the state. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next up is select board updates. Um, I don't think I have any this week. I got nothing. No. Yeah, yeah. Happiness is summer and everybody yeah. you know, taking a breath after town meeting. That lovely time of year. All right, Um, the only thing is just that we did solidify or at least temporarily solidify our schedule for the summer, which is posted on the town website. I saw it. If it there. isn't, it will be yeah. I saw it there back this morning picture. So yes, it's there. Thank um, you, Cindy. Thank you. Um so yeah, so that's um that's all set. It's basically an every other week schedule for the summer, um, which is of course subject to change uh based on the needs of the town and uh what's you know needing to be dealt with. All right. Town ministry updates. What do you got for us, Jeff? Um Wednesday, National Grid is going to be at the library to discuss the transmission line improvement program that they were here to talk about six months ago. Oh, it's a while ago. Um, so, uh, yes, it's going to be 6 to 8 p.m. at the library on Wednesday. Um, and there's translation services available. So if anybody's interested and has questions, contact me. Um, Do you know what that's going to be? Um, reported on Zoom or anything like that, or is that 
Is there is that going to be there or anything like that? Are you aware? Not that I'm aware. So I don't. At least I'm under the impression this isn't really a formal presentation by them. Is that it's someone there more to ask? Did you could ask questions of? That's that was what I I didn't know if there was going to be a presentation, but they said there were going to be people who could answer questions about vegetation management and the like chemicals they and, use yeah. and things so like that. And they have a list of different people, and I'll try and get that up on the website too. Um, yeah, I, I'm not positive it didn't really be anything to record. I was just yeah. asking. Yeah, I will yeah, I'm not positive. My guess is it's a. Yeah. Come in, talk to us, ask us your questions, and ask us all your fears now so that we don't have to hear about them when we're when our guys are out there doing the work. Yep. Okay. Um great. Thank you for that. Do you, anything else from you or nope? All right. Um next up we do have a piece of correspondence, and that is a request for special legislation uh be the legal voting age, local voting age. Um just for context for anyone listening at town meeting, the town passed this is a petition to instruct the select board petition the state to allow Sunderland to allow 16 and 17 year olds to vote only in town elections and town meeting. Um, and so this letter is our letter per that petition to Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay asking them to submit legislation on our behalf to the state asking for special compensation from them to allow us to do this. That's all right? Yes. Beautiful. All right, got it all right. Um, and so this is just sort of a formality of the the board approving said letter and sitting at the door. We've already discussed it. We've already backed it and all that kind of stuff. Um, anything you want to go over about that, Jeff? Or no? All right. Any discussion on that before we send them off? No. no. All right. Wonderful. Um, one last thing before we vote on that, and that's just uh, for context. Both Conway and Wheatley also passed the same legislation as well, or the same. You know, petition as well. And so they will likely also be sending letters to the same or I think they're both. Are they both at least still? I think so. I think they're both. Anyways. Wait, 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 and just again for context, part of the point of this was that there have been a bunch of times we've already passed it, but there has to be sort of a critical mass for the state to take it seriously. And we're kind of signing on to a larger effort to get the state to actually get through it. All right. Any other discussion before we go ahead? All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion to uh, send the letter, um, read the local voting aids to our representative and senator. Motion to send the letter to our two reps about the local voting age for 16 17 year olds. Second. Right. We have motion being seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nothing, Jeff. Thank you very much for that. Um, any final public comment while we're here? All right. Beautiful. Anyone on the phone? Close once. A motion we adjourn. Oh, <laughs> we have a motion made to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Second. Motion date and second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.